This is the first session in the module on Modelling Excellence. In this session we're going to find out what modelling is and why it's important, in particular in coaching. So by the end of this session you'll be able to explain what is meant by modelling, identify the reasons for using modelling and analyse why modelling is an important process in coaching. Modelling is known in NLP as the replication of human excellence. It is the foundation stone of NLP. It's how NLP started. What Bandler and Grinder set out to create was a method of being able to discover how someone does something excellently so that it could be replicated and taught to others. Bandler said that the job of NLP is to create excellence in the performance of human beings, no matter what they do. So let's start by examining this in more detail and thinking about what excellence is. Here is one definition. The state or quality of excelling or being exceptionally good, extreme merit, superiority, or an action, characteristic, feature, etc., in which a person excels. So excellence is about things that we do to a very high quality or that we are exceptionally good at doing. There are two ways of modelling excellence wherever you find it. Firstly you can observe what the person does and this type of modelling relies on watching what the person is doing and copying it. It relies on what you can see and hear. The second type of modelling, though, also involves discovering the internal processes that are happening when a person achieves excellence. So it discovers not only what the person does, but also what values and belief the person holds that enables them to achieve excellence. It investigates the internal mental approaches of the person, including strategies, meta-programs, neurological levels, time frames and perceptual positions, all of which we'll investigate in this module. It also involves discovering physiology and behavioural patterns found in body language, gestures, eye accessing cues and predicates. So if we take supreme athletes for example, you could watch how they run, how they move their bodies, the stance that they have and you'd learn a lot about how to run better. However, what enables them to win races time and time again is not just to do with the things that you observe on the outside. It's to do with the way they think, their attitude towards running and the strategies that they use to win. That's what makes the difference. And how do you model those? Bander and Grinder found that both types of modelling were important and they reveal ways of modelling the internal processes that allowed you to be able to model excellence in people. So modelling is the foundation of NLP and it's based on the premise that what makes the difference between doing something excellently and doing it less well is to do with firstly what the person does, that is what can be observed, and their mental processes and their frame of mind. And to be able to replicate their excellence you need to be able to discover both. And when you've discovered the important parts of both, then you can replicate the behaviour and teach others. And modelling can be used to replicate excellence in an individual and in an organisation. Here is an exercise to get you thinking about modelling an individual. Write down the answers to these questions. Firstly, what does someone else do excellently that you would like to be able to do? What do you do well in one situation that you would like to be able to transfer across to another situation? For example, you may be very good at motivating yourself when it comes to meeting with customers, but not so good at motivating yourself to completing administrative paperwork. How would you benefit if you would be able to replicate these behaviours? So, you can model other people and what they do, and you can model yourself and what you do well in one context so that you can teach yourself how to do it in other situations. Here is the opportunity to start thinking about modelling and its value to an organisation. So please write down what is the value of modelling to an organisation. 
Here are some answers. It enables an organisation to identify talent and excellence and use it to help others to learn how to do the same. Many organisations bring in external trainers or consultants when they already have examples of excellence in terms of skills or attitude in their organisation, if only they knew how to model them and pass them on. With the added benefit of acknowledging the individuals and their talent. Modelling also provides a methodology for discovering the difference that makes a difference in achieving excellence. It gives the organisation the ability to find out what things have the biggest impact on performance and which things have less impact, so that they can put their resources into those things that will have the greatest impact. Modelling also helps create a learning culture. We'll be talking about this in much more depth in the module on organisational impact of coaching. But being able to model excellence enables people to learn more easily from others and themselves, so that they can create a culture that is looking for continuous improvement and improvement in the ability and atmosphere to learn. Modelling changes the emphasis from finding what people are doing wrong to finding the high-performing skills that people have. This is an important switch in changing the culture of an organisation. It acknowledges the excellence that already exists in organisation. And with that acknowledgement comes its impact on morale, motivation and engagement. So finally, what does all this have to do with coaching? Note down how you think modelling fits in with coaching and why is having the ability to model an important skill for a coach? Here are some answers. The purpose of coaching is to help someone develop and grow. And if they already knew how to achieve what they wanted, then they would have no need for coaching. So helping someone discover new ways of achieving outcomes is an important part of coaching. Modelling allows the coach to model out the current strategies and ways of doing things that the client is using at the moment and help them install new strategies that will move them towards excellence. When people do their problems, they do them excellently. They're really good at doing them. So as a coach, you will want to discover exactly how they do that so that you can help them find some other ways of approaching things. This is important for you as a coach in order to think about what interventions will lead the client to their outcome. And it's important to the client to help them think about how they can change and what they can change. So modelling is key to coaching and the coaching modeller that we've been talking about. And it enables you to coach in a way that handles the internal processes that are giving the client their current results, as well as the external processes that they've been using.